when I wake up in the morning, I think the best thing going to bed that night is saying, I gave everything I could to the day. Man. I want to ask the questions that the people want to hear. When you was out there in LA, why? Why did it end? The question that everybody saw is, why did y'all split? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Be For Real podcast. Uh, today, as I always say, I got something special, but I got something a little more special, man. A brother, a friend, man. Yes, Q Derry. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, people? What's up, man? Hey, and I have to give him a, a proper introduction, man. My boy is a singer, songwriter, un- entrepreneur, man. A place to sing. He got placements out here, man, people, man. He, he, he doing big things, and he got more big things to come, man. Tell, tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh man, uh, Q Dare man, born in the city of Beaumont, Texas. For sure. Um, most people know me from the group Twelve Till, one third of being Twelve Till, man. Um, yeah, love of music, love of good things, love of good people, man. And since we already started that, man, we might as well start with the Twelve Till, man. Hey, I'm 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 going back to when Twelve Till was just like. Famous for those YouTube videos, man. Them covers. And, yeah. and one cover uh, that happens to be my favorite is the one, the one plus one cover uh, by Beyonce. Oh, is it one man. Plus one? Yes, sir. What, what, that's what it's called? Yeah. That's, that happened to be my, my favorite uh, cover right there. How did y'all get into that and and uh, who started? First of all, how did 12 Till come about? So let's see, man. I'm going to um, start here. Me and Dante been knowing each other since we was five. Five years old. Ooh. Uh, his grandma... His grandma and grandpa stayed next door to my mama okay. and my daddy uh, in our family house. Where me, my siblings, we all grew up in that house right here in the north end of Beaumont on El Paso Street. Um, grew up there, and me and Dante, we knew each other from there. We played football. We he come over there. We played football in the front yard. But years later, Dante was doing music. He's known around the city for doing music, and you know we still kept that bond from when we was children. But uh, I ended up going football, doing straight football, and decided to get back into music. Uh, my 11th grade year of high school, and I was in a group called Four Way, mm-hmm. which later brings me to Meet and Be. He, I put it like this. Like in the Temptation story, you got uh, Otis and Blue. B was my blue. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I was Otis like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, while I was in the group, it was four of us. We wanted to make it a five-man group. And one of the guys in the group was like, man, I know a dude named B. He used to work with me at McDonald's. He can sing. He said, that nigga used to be on the fry and sing. I was like, I ain't never heard of him. I was like, man, give me his number. So I called him, and he was like, I, I said, hey, I got your number from a boy. Uh, I wanted to see if you could harmonize. He said, oh, yeah, I can harmonize. I said, do you know Chiz? Do you? He's like, yeah, this is my senior year in high school. Football okay. season had just ended. So now I'm like, all right, I'm going to be playing football, but I'm going to take music a little bit serious. Gotcha. So he sang on the phone, and then like later on that week, he came to my house. Back in 2009, he came to the crib, and uh, we harmonized Cheers to You together. Just two part, him. Just me okay, and him. Two-part. Two-part harmony. And we ended up like kind of – like splitting once I got ready for uh college, I got ready to go to college. He went to the same college too, uh LIT out here in Beaumont. We was both going to LIT and I ran into him again while I was playing football and um we chopped it up at the table and he was like, Bro, you ain't trying to do no music. I was like, Yeah, I said, Man, let's get it. I'm for real this time. By then my high school group didn't split. Okay, four way no more. Four way done. Okay, everybody went off to college. People, like everybody went a different way. So it's me and B, and we just really getting together every day, just bonding. We just kicking it and shit, playing the game, harmonizing, studying uh, the group player. We I used to have the cassette, the VHS. We pop that motherfucker in. We just do the harmonies over and over, just tightening not too shit. So in the middle of that, we both still going to school. Now we starting to sing for people around the campus. Gotcha. Just us two. Everybody like, oh, they harmonize good together. We on some Casey and JoJo shit. <laughs> but I was in class one day. And like I said, Dante never had stopped doing music. Mm-hmm. He was always still doing music. Just like when MySpace was popular. Oh, yeah. He was he was popping on MySpace. I went and checked that nigga profile, and he had some cold-ass songs in there. I was like, damn, listening to his song, his tone. 
and he was singing, knew how to harmonize, putting harmony in and shit. I was like, bro, I'm going to hit him up. So I hit his sister. I said, uh, you, you know the last time you talked to Dante? She's like, uh, here go his number. He, I think he was living in Baytown or something like that at the time. Yeah. She gave me his number. I called him. I said, hey, bro, this Quinn. He said, man, what's up? Because we had already, me and Dante had tried to do something in the talk, right? We did okay. a talent show together. Okay. When I was at Westbrook, we did a talent show together and shit. And uh, I told him, I said, bro, it's me and this dude named Brian, and we want to uh, put you in the group. He's like, all right, I'm going to hit you when I get to Beaumont. That day went by, he ain't never hit me. I'm like, oh, that shit over. The next morning, he said, hey, I'm on my way out there. It's like 1, 2 o'clock. Me and B had just got out of uh, class or whatever. Dante came met us, and we harmonized Cheers to You together for the first time at Brian apartment in French Rose, bro. Dante, mom and them stayed in French Road too. And that's crazy that you say that because uh, as far as you having your start, well, some of your start in music uh, with Dante, and that's the same thing with me. Like, because that was Damn. one of the first um, studios I went to. I was about 13, 14. I was Damn. recording a little bit. I was recording a little bit, but um, when I went to him, mm -hmm. uh, he was doing studio time, $25 a track. I remember, <laughs> man. I was, I was asking my mama, man, give me $25. I got to go to the studio. She said, what is studio here? French Road? She said, French Road? That's an apartment. <laughs> she said, that's an apartment. I said, I know, but that's, he got a studio, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to get. And then so she would give me $25. I'd go over there, record. And then before I knew it, I realized I was like, he loved music so much. I ain't even got to ask him to sing on stuff. If he liked the song, he gonna just start singing and stuff. So, so he got on a couple of tracks and stuff. I, I wish I knew what them songs was, but yeah, we was doing stuff like that. And then that was the first time he, he introduced me to Pro Tools. So Damn. yeah, he taught me how to, you know, well, he didn't even really just teach me, but I'm, I'm looking, I'm watching, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Observing, you learn, you know, so much. And then I'm mm -hmm. listening to, and then it got to where I was going over there while he was recording sometimes. Yeah, And this, this short dread, Dante, oh, this, ain't, yeah. this ain't, you know what I'm saying? So he up in there uh, doing the harmonies, and that's when I learned about harmonies and why my songs didn't feel good, why mm -hmm. his feel better. I'm like, okay. So that's why I get a lot of my background. So that you got that same kind of start. Like, you can learn a lot, you know yeah, what I'm saying, bro. for people and stuff like that. So uh, what made y'all start doing the uh, the covers, though, on YouTube? So uh, I got a shout out to this boy named... Uh Glancy Kelly, my boy from Port Arthur, from Golden yeah, Triangle. I, I remember, I remember uh, way back. I never met him in person, but I can remember uh, that name. And y'all had that song. Y'all used to sing that. Ever met a girl, girl so funny? Fly. Yeah, yeah. I remember y'all yeah. used to sing that all the time. And but that boy used to sing. Yeah, man. bro. He 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 came um, one day because I I think like just having the buzz around the city when yeah. me Dunce and B had started like going to Parkdale Mall or singing at Lamar. We kind of created a little buzz. And they traveled to Port Arthur. He was at Lamar one day, uh, Glancy. Mm -hmm. And we saw him. He's like, oh, y'all y'all the group 3T. We was 3TG at the time. He's okay. like, y'all the group 3TG. That's what people been talking about y'all around the city. And um, one day he came back to the apartment. Like I said, we used to get together and just harmonize. You know what I'm saying? Me and B and then Dante will come. Once he get out of class, he come back to French Road yeah. and we harmonize. Glancy Kelly had brought a camera. Mm -hmm. And told us, he said, uh, bro, y'all need to start posting on YouTube. Posted Cheers to You was the first video we ever the, the, That's when y'all was like in the gym somewhere? No, we was. I seen well, one when y'all was in the gym somewhere. I had on blue with some big fat ass uh, jeans. <laughs> uh, DZ had on a goddamn sweatshirt and some basketball shorts. This a throwback because he had the phone that was on his lanyard and shit. Oh, remember we used to do that? Yeah. Them, uh, them Galaxy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> And uh, that boy B had on the basketball shorts with the jacket and shit. So um, that day, Glancy had came over there. He's like, yeah, y'all just sing. Y'all just do it. And that nigga was holding the camera and recorded that. And we he uploaded it on his channel. It's still on his channel to this day. He uploaded that and we like, damn, people really fuck with what we doing. Our yeah. harmony and shit. Because we heard it first. It's like, damn, man, that shit sound good, bro. It was just perfect. From the first time... We've been living three different lives, but that harmony was perfect. Cause y'all got together and it just meshed so well. It just meshed, bro. Like I had, I had the vision when I was in class. I said, man, I can see Dante, me, Dante, and B in a group. I was supposed to be taking a test. I think I failed that motherfucker so bad because I was thinking about I oh, need to yeah do music. I need to go get with them and just harmonize the song, see what it sound like. Man, that shit worked out, bro. We posted that and we created our own YouTube channel. And we created our own YouTube channel. I think we had like one video hit like 500, 600 views. And we was like, oh, shit. 
Like we got something. Yeah, hey, that's a lot of views when you ain't used to that. You just like, oh, somebody watching. Yeah, bro. Man, that's that's what's up. And from then on, like like I said, we'll get together, play the game, go play basketball together and shit, and we'll just go get a camera and just start singing. I'll set that motherfucker up on down a cereal box or a countertop and just sing. And we started sending them views, po in. So how did the uh, group even get introduced to Tank? How did Tank find y'all from the start? Was it just YouTube or? It was YouTube, but okay. I'm going to tell you a funny story, man. A lot of people don't know. Um, in 2010, when it was me, Dante, and B, like, like I said, we was traveling in the cities. We were singing in it any chance we could, bro. Uh, Tank had came to Houston. And me, Dante, and B were working with a producer from Houston that played the keyboard for a Tank. Okay. Okay. And he was like, hey, he going to be in Houston. How about you guys come? So at the time, my brother was our manager. We went to Houston, and uh, Tank was had got through performing. We was like, damn, that's really Tank. It's 2010. And uh, he get ready to get off the stage and walk to the back, and we just bust out. We start singing Cheers to You. Wait, y'all just started singing? Bro, just started singing. A, a, a whole damn crowd of building, people clearing out. We just bust out and start man, singing. Was that the plan? or? Really, it was like we had went to... On the on on the count of the keyboard player that yeah, played bro, for so time. So we playing for y'all to just do that. We did it. We just ended up doing it because we were invited to be like because we looked up to him so much. And then the guy was like, "Yeah, I will play keyboard." For him. He was like, "What the what?" Like nigga, we gotta come see. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna bring y'all in. No tab. I have a wristband for y'all." And we went. Show was over. Tank walking to the back, and we just bust out singing. And what he, was his reaction to that? He was walking. He said he looked around. He came down there. He said, "Uh." Oh, he said, that, that's y'all singing. He was like, yeah, we sing Cheers to You. He said, what's y'all name? We said 3TG. And he started laughing. He was like, oh, yeah. My boy told me about y'all, the guy that played the keys. And the plan was supposed to be to record a demo so we can get it to Tank. A lot of people don't know that, but that was in 2010. We had recorded a demo specifically to give to and y'all Tank. y'all did it? Y'all get We did the demo. And then he called y'all back later? No. <laughs> so how did y'all get back? It, it, it fell off. Everything just fell off because the... Producer was like, man, we got an opportunity to put a demo together, but I'm going to try to shop it anyway. You know how that work. I'm going to shop it anyway for y'all. So we missed the mark with getting into Tank. So how did y'all end up getting with Tank? So we later on, years later, we did um, a TGT cover called Sex Ain't Never Felt Better. Okay. And uh, what was the other song off that album? I Need. Oh, I Need, I Need. Yeah, and by then, now, Twitter got a little buzz. You know what I'm saying? We didn't went viral in 2012. Oh, yeah. Okay, y'all had the... Uh... So a lot of people, it's floating around the internet. Twitter, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, the shit was floating around. Well, I think it, somebody found it on Twitter and like from the camp at the time was Song Dynasty. Okay. That was the label that they were starting. Um, they ended up reaching out to us and like, hey, we're going to help y'all. We want to help y'all. Uh, we seen y'all cover of... I need and sex ain't never felt better. So shit, man. Once they saw that, like a couple of months later, we went to LA. We flew to LA. And it's like we want to bring y'all out here. And around that time, um, TGT was getting ready to go on tour. And they brought me Dante and B out there to come to the rehearsal and kind of just fill out um LA and who we wanted to sign to, because that wasn't our only choice when we got ready to go to LA. We mm -hmm. actually went out there on the tab with somebody else. Another label wow. from uh, in L.A. We went on Natab to L.A. But we was like, shit, fuck it, bro. Shop around. Let's shop around. Let's go. Let's go see what, what's hitting for us. And nigga, if we can get Tank, nigga, the King Army, nigga, we, nigga, we can get over there. And we did. <laughs> we went to the went to his studio. He was recording and shit. And it was like, damn, bro, we can see ourselves over here because he understand R&B. And from then on, we locked that shit in, bro. Twelve till back in the party, oh, man. man. Hey, I was gonna ask about that, but you just, you came straight off the jump because I seen <laughs> I seen a little snippet of yes, y'all singing the horn. I was like, wait, is that the is that the till? <laughs> is that the is that the till? What's hey, going on, man? Man, we had to run it back one more time, man. One more again. Uh, for the people, bro. For four nine, man. For we gotta sure. do it. Man, because I remember I went to the little, what was that R&B &B event that I saw y'all at? Oh, for the Motown. Yeah, that Motown. I was like, man, bro, I know they just doing it for this, bro, but it'd be nice just to see them back just one more time. Put out a, a something, <laughs> an EP, mixtape, snippet, something, man. <laughs>
Sorry for the interruption, but I am editing right now and I am noticing that for some reason the camera went out of focus during recording. Uh, so for the next 14 minutes or so, it's going to be a little blurry. But then after that, the quality is going to get better and we'll be back in focus. This is for the viewers, but for the people who are listening, the quality is still going to be good. You'll be able to hear everything. Uh, and that's it. And since we're here, I want to thank you for watching and listening to the Be For Real podcast. I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. I know we're getting we ahead of ourselves a little bit going to the 12 till, but I want to take it back. I want to take it back to, because uh, I know you was a church boy. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Take it back to the roots of the music, man. What was your inspiration initially? Oh, man. Um, being raised in a family where everybody sang or play an instrument. Man. Uh, but I was the youngest out of the bunch of the grandchildren. Okay. It started with my grandma. You know, she had us in church Tuesday, Wednesday. Friday and Sunday, <laughs> you know, like her siblings, they in the street, they yeah. grandchildren in the street. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they wasn't like how my grandma raised her children and which yeah. would be all my cousins too. In the church. Yeah. In the church. Um, and my grandma just at an early age, put it in me to never be afraid to sing in front of people. Okay. Uh, just know where to sing from the soul and singing to God and knowing where the gift come from. So basically you would say that being in the church got you out of that stage fright. Yes, sir. Because you, you probably been doing it so long, you don't even remember the last time you had it. Yeah, bro. But you always get like a little butterfly, but you For just, sure. it ain't like, I ain't going on stage. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's a difference. Yeah, it started out, man, and, uh, you know, playing drums in church. Siblings singing in the choir, playing drums. My mama played piano, my daddy played organ. So it was just kind of like passed down to me, man, to what music. I couldn't even run from even Even when I was playing sports, I still couldn't run from Would you say a lot of that ch church uh, upbringing and things like that inspires a lot of your music today? For sure. Like sonically? Sonically, for sure. Like, uh, you know, R&B didn't change so much. A lot. It used to be cool to, yeah. And all yeah, that, now but, they not, they're like they're not singing in the rain no more. No, they're not, they're not begging not. no more. You know what I'm saying? No, None of bro. that no more. It's like get to the point. Yeah, get you know straight to the point. It's not like it's two minutes. Yep, get, get in and out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. it, it ain't like it was. Like uh, wait, you know what? We don't have really bridges no more. No, like they killed the whole bridge vibe. And if they do, it don't feel the same. Yes, it don't feel like a bridge like it used to. Yeah, bro. So yeah, you're right. R&B music has changed a whole lot. Like how have you adapted? To that and what have you been doing in your music to just to fit in and, and get that get your music heard the proper way man i think um just having a mind to listen to so many different genres okay you know from um rap to the trap you know most of the beats that you're singing over now in r&b they trap anyway yeah the drums yeah the drums don't feel it doesn't feel like that passion in r&b anymore which R&B has changed like because i listen to a lot of r&b and that's how r&b sound it's like a rapper can get on this yeah People bro like, yeah, I listen to like a lot of Eric Bellinger and his all his stuff sound like that. Yes, you know what bro. I'm saying? But it's yes. just that's just the route that everything's going. Mm -hmm. I think, man, just taking that, um, taking all those stuff like the jazz. You know, we from down south, so it's like the Zydeco. Yeah, you got to put all of that in now, uh -huh. but stay true to yourself. So I might be on a trap beat, but I'm always add a Q Dare sound to it. Okay, and that just come from practicing, having my own studio and trying to figure out a sound to where it's still digestible for the youth. Okay. But people that's in our age range, like, oh yeah, that kind of give me a feeling of real R&B as they term it. Man, that sounds like some real R&B. But yeah, man, just taking every genre I, from country to everything, everything, man. And I do see now that like, you, it's not sounding like that old school R&B, but just having a taste of it, it gives that feel yes just, sir. just a little taste of it like well you can belt out at one point just, just let <laughs> yeah. it out you know what i'm saying so it's like i do i do see that a lot in, in your music and stuff like that and my favorite thing about some of your music is like the backgrounds like that's mainly what yeah. i'm thinking because every time we used to have conversation i'm like okay so how you do 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 and then a lot of stuff that i do now i get from you like yes, he uh, said, okay he said do six of these eight of these <laughs> you know stacks so, man yeah, you know what i'm saying stack them group them Turn them down a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what I've been I've been on that. But you know, but you but I do learn that like a lot of people say you can tell somebody how to do something, but like if they can't, they can't because like if you I notice like a lot with the harmonies and things like that, if you can't hear it, you can't sing it. Yes, sir. Like you gotta be able to hear it before it even is yep. on wax. Yep. And like so you can teach a person all your tricks, do this and that and that, but you're not with them, if they can't hear it, mm -hmm. it's not gonna come out. And Facts. they can send the track to you. 
you do some stuff like like damn I ain't even know because you heard it yep before it was even on wax so like it's 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 like having an ear yes sir and, and then your ear get better over time exactly 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 so uh, I do notice that uh like even when I was watching an episode of on Netflix I know you got some placements and stuff even a placement that you didn't even know about yeah. like so yeah. how did how did that happen or what do you put your music for that to happen oh man well um it started back when I lived in L A. Okay. One of my good friends uh, that taught me how to work Pro Tools, okay. uh, Ruben, um, he had told me, said, man, we're building a library for syncing and licensing, mm-hmm. and we would like to bring you on. I was like, okay, but they hadn't had to start. They hadn't started it yet. Okay. Um, they were still at the beginning stages. So I actually ended up leaving L.A. and moved back to Beaumont. Got back to Beaumont is like 2017. Still nothing. You know, they still in the building process. Yeah, they trying to... Man, just so happened, God blessed and looked out, uh, 2018, my son was about to be born, my first son, and um, I got a call saying, hey, we're getting ready to start it, we're getting ready to push the button, can you submit five songs? I think I started with five songs. I'm like at 80 now, maybe 80 plus, but I started with five songs uh, around this town, bro, around the Super Bowl. It was when the Eagles went to the Super Bowl. Mm. That's how long ago it is, but uh, we started that with five songs, and I submitted those. And maybe like two, three months. I didn't know how it really worked. But back then he said, well, just submit the five songs and we'll try to get them placed anywhere, which this can vary from BT to Because I know you was on MTV one time on the- uh, Ridiculousness. That, not not just that. You was on a uh, some type of reality show. Okay. uh, I can't remember. But- I don't know if it was a dating show. I don't know. Yeah. But I heard it. I heard it on something like that. But uh, speaking of that, the fact that you had to submit five songs, how important it is as an artist to just do music and have a catalog, have a lot Ooh, of music? Oh, man. Uh, that plays a big part. Okay. You know, um, I, you can't call yourself an artist if you don't have a catalog because you're supposed to go be able to go in that catalog and if they say, hey, we need a song for a happy show, a high school musical show. Man, you need to have that in your catalog from pop to R&B to trap to country. You need to just be creating daily. All the time. To be ready for that call. And usually that's how it works. But like you said, starting off with five songs, that was my my plan. I really hadn't wrote for any shows. And I got my first placement. It was uh, ESPN. Mm. Um, Who was that? uh, Alabama was doing training camp. Oh, uh, when Derrick Henry was at running back, bro. And it was on the, ESPN. It oh. was playing in the back. They jumping over the uh like the bags bro, trying to. I know that was a moment. I was like, oh shit, it's like a full circle moment, bro. I love football. That was my first placement though. So are you looking forward to like more placements and 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 how's the business part of that? Like, are you seeing anything or like do you know how to go by that business part? Or are you just trying to get heard? You just don't care. Um, I think it's a little bit of both, uh, okay. being heard and also too, uh, it's a passive income. Okay. Uh, this is, it comes quarterly. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you sign, if you have a PRO, uh, performance royalty organization like, uh, ASCAP or BMI, BMI yeah. they collect it for you. Yeah. And I, I like that because I tell anybody, man, everybody of course want to be a superstar, want to mm-hmm. be the top at what they do, want to be up there with the Drakes and the Nickies. And the, but I feel like if you are artist and you do music and you've been doing music for some time and you're able to make money mm-hmm. doing it, I feel yeah. like you won. Come on, man. I feel like because that, cause that's the ultimate goal. Like yeah. everybody like, would love to be, you know, the top star or whatever. But if you can make money doing what you love and and if you can make it past to just making a little bit money to making enough money to not have to work, yes, once you so. get there, you made it, made it. Yeah, bro. But people only see uh, making it as the fame portion. How you feel about that? Like, um, I mean, that's what's glamorized. Even before we got into the business, yeah, uh, we thought that the cars and the big houses, like that, was just easy to attain. But you know. As you go through that journey, you realize, like, man, the best part about it is the grind. And finally seeing that pay off. Yeah. I wouldn't want to um, have the opportunity to be, like, just straight off the bat. No rehearsals, no YouTube, no placements, and just have the fame. Yeah, and just uh, going through that artist development that makes it to where you, you feel like you earned something. Yes, and not sir. only that, but you're ready for whatever may come to you. Because I know going through the whole things of... Being in places and then losing gigs and this yeah, and that. it's ups and downs. Mm-hmm. It puts it makes your skin tough to where you could just feel like you can go through anything. Yes, sir. That is exactly it. <laughs> so we can move on to like 
let's go into uh 12 till going to la and things like that how was it what was it like just being able to be around tank learn from him and jay valentine and just people like that like what was that experience like man um being three country boys from beaumont and then going out there the first thing you learn is you move to a big city like that it's a Kajillion people doing what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get around the greats and you get around the legends and you get around the people that actually got the experience. They try to teach you firsthand on how to have longevity. Yeah, I see that. And uh, one thing that you said, said, you said it's a kajillion people doing what you're doing, bro. If you just even, not even just going to another city or state, if you just get on Instagram, you realize <laughs> yeah. how many people do it. Mm -hmm. And then you realize how many people are good at it. Yeah, bro. Bro, talent is not hard to find. Yes. That's why when you see somebody that's super duper talented and you be like, why he ain't made it? Because talent is everywhere. It's everybody everywhere. can sing. All you got to do is hit a button. Everybody can sing, man. Yes, like, bro. I'm going through Instagram. I'm like, these are very talented artists. 2,000 followers. Mm -hmm. 100 mm -hmm. followers. Mm -hmm. Great artists. Yes, bro. Like, great, but it's more. Mm -hmm. It's way more to being talented. That's why it's easy for a, a label to pass on people. You'd be like, yeah. why they shelfing him? Like, because yeah. it, talent is nothing. Yeah, bro. It's nothing. Like, a star and talent is two different things. Yes. <laughs> it's just two different things. You learn that. And uh, so, being out there, like, seeing all these talented people, seeing the competition, yeah. basically, yeah. like, how, how, what, what are you feeling like going through that? And you seeing, like, you coming from Beaumont where you're top five. Right. You see what I'm saying? You're right. top five. Like, and not five. Mm -hmm. And then you go somewhere else you like dang he might be working with me like <laughs> yeah. he, i can't my falsetto my falsetto ain't quite like that you know <laughs> motherfucker cranking out five songs a day Man, you just, just going through one like god the damn done made a song in 30 minutes yes and bro. it's not just a song it's got harmonies background it's a it's mm -hmm. a banger mm -hmm. so like how you feel seeing people that's really really talented and they everywhere oh man <laughs> um I think it's inspiring. Okay. You know, it, it make me want to push harder. It make me be like, damn, you know, it, it's so easy to be replaceable. What are you going to do to that's going to set you aside from everybody else? Okay. Um, whether that be the tone of your voice or anything, what it's going to take in order to set you apart? Because I think it's a it's a mutual respect, too. For if you can sit down and record a song and come up with lyrics at the top of your head, it's to be respected because there's so many people doing it, bro. And I tell people all the time, like, people be listening to a song, like, from a, a, a artist that's, like, local or whatever, and they be like, mm -hmm. man, this song ain't really that good, this and that. And I be like, man, do you know how hard it is to make a song? Yeah. Like, people don't understand. Like, even, <laughs> even the mamba rappers, as they call them, like, yeah. it's not easy to, like, structure a song. Because what you're trying to do is... Not you're not just trying to make a song. You're trying to you're trying to put a feeling into somebody. Yeah, bro. That 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 is. that is just tough. Cause like I can make a song. You can make a song right now, just mm -hmm. straight, just dry vocals, nothing. But if you don't come back and put that feeling in it, it's yep. nothing. Yep. And to be able to be an artist enough to do that, yeah, that yep. takes skill. People don't realize. Like, oh, he just made a song. No, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> No, it took did. some time and some emotions. <laughs> it took Boys some, be drained. And, then you, and you digging from a place that, like, sometimes you make a song about something that you're not even feeling at that moment. Yep. But you felt it and you're trying to remember a feeling. Yeah. You're trying to remember a feeling. Are you trying to feel something that somebody else is going through? Like, it's yep. a lot that goes into that. Yes, sir. So, like, when you when you creating your art, like, what are you, what is your, not not your process, but, like, give me a little bit about on that. So, man, like, um, I can hear a beat, beat come on. Uh, usually, nine times out of ten, the beat tell me what tell to you say. What to, I was just about to say that. It always tell you what to say. Now I got to find that emotion. Okay. And um, if it's about love, it's a little bit easier. Okay. Because I, I try to live a lot of my life through love and Based peace. Based off of love. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's a little bit more to get to. And then you got just, once you find that feeling and what they be telling you, now it's time to marry them together with the lyrics. And you coming up with them lyrics and you're trying to really piece it together so the whoever listening to it, they can close their eyes and see. Even if they don't live in Texas, wherever you are when you're making a song, even if they not that with you. You're just painting a picture. Still painting a picture, man. Got you. Because like, when you say that, like I, the way I think of it is, it's like you you making a song, but it's 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 not for you. Yeah, exactly. You got to think about it from that from that perspective. Exactly, exactly. And speaking of the uh, songwriting thing, uh, I, I like to consider myself a songwriter at heart. So I pretty much 
uh, try to come up with like good concepts, mm-hmm. like because we you know we can talk about love and it's like it's no topic song that you can write that's never been wrote before. Yeah, true. But you can you can come up with concepts and twist the words a little bit to make it a different feel. So like, how you feel about when you coming up with like you know wordplay and where the hook it starts somewhere, but then at the end it routes back to you know what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah, like yeah, those yeah. type of hooks to bring it back to the verse we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I love songs like that. And I think if you can just take those eight bars or if you're doing a eight bar and a four bar pre-hook, yeah. try your best to fit in as much as you can uh-huh. um, to where you can tell in the pieces like the intro, mm-hmm. the first page of the book, the second chapter, Make writing a song up. like that. Yeah. yeah. And the bridge is like the closing of all. You know, mm-hmm. you put it all together. So yeah, I think that that's pretty much been my, my go-to. As far as the... Uh... You see, we in a TikTok era. Yep. Everybody having uh, the ten second song, and that be the best part of the whole song. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, how you you want songs like that because yep. they shoot. That's how you get them streams, and that's how you get that money. Yes, bro. But like, how you try to get out of just trying to keep up with what what's today's world going in, and also adding your own flavor at the same time, but still trying to trying to what's the word I'm looking for? Trying to give the people what they want, but mm-hmm. also staying true to yourself. Um, I think just taking from both of them, staying true to yourself and uh, following that, all right, the 10 seconds got to be the best song. Just making memorable lines. Yes. And making sure they going to find that in the song. If it's a memorable line, it might be 10 seconds, might be 12, 12 seconds, but in each song have that memorable line to okay. what people can sing along and they be like, oh, that's the song. That's the song. Oh, yeah, he said something like, and it always it bring come. them to okay. what the song gives. So vocally, like, Vocally, like, what's some artists that you look up to? I gotta say, uh, D'Angelo, number one. Okay. Um, Tank for sure. Oh. I was practicing before we got signed to Tank, bro. Um, back in the day, we used to try to run his notes. Songs that wasn't even out on the album, uh, we would be in now trying to run the notes. Or I ran it back like, how how is he combining soulful tones? But he running notes. He got these harmonies. It was like something I had never heard. So for sure, I gotta put Tank on now. Okay. Um, somebody else. Uh, I gotta say, Stokely from Men Condition. Mm, okay, tone just going out of the box of what R and B is. You know, they wasn't considered an R and B group. Uh-huh. Some people consider them as an R and B group, but I think he just pushed the issue. As far as uh female artists, like what's some Ooh. good vocalists that you? I gotta say, Patty Labelle. Uh-huh. Uh, of course. Um. Uh, Giving you the best that I got. Oh. That is some. She make me feel something. Uh-huh. Uh, Anita Baker. I gotta put in. I gotta put her up there too. Of course, with the legends like Prince and uh, Michael Jackson, the ones that everybody say you gotta throw them in now. But I think for me, my list was a little bit different because I even got gospel too, uh-huh. bro. Who? Like Harvey Watkins from Ooh, uh, Canton Spiritus. Dog, that's. If I had to say that's who I wanted to be like before r and Oh, and KC, man. Gotta say. <laughs> Gotta say my boy KC. You almost left him out. But as far as females, man, I shoot, uh, Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, oh yeah, goodness. bro. An uh, alien. Yeah. Vo- like, vocally, <laughs> is unmatched. Yes. Unmatched. Yeah. Brandy. Oh. Brandy, bro. Harmony. Talk about harmonies. Yes. Talk about harmonies. It don't get no better. Yes. With harmony. Like, she is a beast when it comes to that. Like, you can't teach that. Yeah, bro. That's just being in the studio. That's time. Yeah. <laughs> That's time. Yep. For real, for real. So, so you uh let's go back. So when you you were in LA, like what's some of the things, like more lessons that you've learned and what's some of the things that you got to be around that just just molded you and just you loved that experience, made you love that experience? Touring gotta be number one because um you learn that the different experience, the different cities, uh also too, like vocal care oh i was just about to say that like because you go to the same you go to these different cities and you're doing the same show sometimes three in a week sometimes two in a week and it's like (laughs) how are you able to give your all to every you know what i'm saying because you know you got your big cities where you want to kill it but you don't want to leave these other people out because they pay for tickets too in kentucky and you know what i'm saying you know like how you giving it your all like every show and you still have vocal ability like (laughs) that's just crazy Man, rest. I learned a lot about uh that being on the road, like resting your voice, and it's okay not to talk, or to being on every laugh and every man. Let me get loud. Let me turn so up. So they like, were actually they were actually like just talk less. 
Yeah. Like that's like a that's like a a trick to keeping your voice healthy. Like I actually saw Tank when he get on the tour bus, everybody playing, he gonna take a nap. Okay. He not not talking, not playing, and then he going straight to the stage. Even on the way to the stage, is is more so about getting it together, resting your body, working out, like on tour. Like, man, I would say when we went on tour, it's probably the best shape that I I went on a different path of working out after tour because they would just show us like, hey man, you singing from your abs. You need to, we do the workout like the football abs and all that stuff, but it's actually a technique to training your body to be able to handle the hours. And not being in a bed, sleeping in a tour bus yeah, bunk. They be sleeping in a bunk or yeah, sleeping in a hotel all the time. Yes. It's like Real you never talk. get used to nothing. Yeah, never, never, bro. Really? So I think vocal. And then second, I got to say, like, living in uh, L.A. and learning studio etiquette. What do you mean? Studio etiquette, it was basically like knowing how to come up with a song, how to put it together, the sweet ill candies, like the harmonies and the, the punch lines and stuff like that. Like you get to be around the greats that's doing it. So like uh, different producers, like um, what's my guy, Cosign. He's a producer. He produced the ass, ass, ass. For, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Big he was the first person to tell us like we were singing too loud. <laughs> like what we usually do Sing do you me. believe in love all that like we be singing it mm -hmm. he said y'all bring it down a little bit <laughs> I was like what the fuck what he the said, fuck that mean he said bring it down bring it down so we in that house singing do you believe in we right there yeah. but that's the first time I'd ever learned it I've been singing oh, my entire life I told you don't don't force it out. Yeah. Don't force it out. It's a it's a it's a place and time for all of that, okay. basically. So that was like my second biggest lesson is learning how vocal control. Okay. And learning when I say studio etiquette, like uh some songs don't call for you to be screaming. Okay. Some of them uh might call for a different tone. Time and place. Time and place, for sure, for sure. And that's deep because when you say that, it's like it is true though. When you listen to some songs, they don't need all that. Yeah. But when you hungry and you trying to every chance you get showcase that you can like watch this uh, like, I can do them runs I don't play you know what I'm saying you, every time you get they say sing oh Yo, bro. I gotta show you I can go high low what you mean <laughs> let me impress you with running these notes yeah, real quick but, but he was just like Calm like bring down. it down, bro. You like tripping. bring it down. <laughs> like y'all harmonize at a lower, a lower pitch, bro. Like I mean, not a lower pitch, but a, a lower volume. Like yeah, bring it down. A yeah. Matches. Hey, I know that was like humbling. Y'all like wait, oh god. Like what the fuck? We ain't know what the fuck you talking about. But <laughs> now it's like you get it. It's, it's it's second nature to me. You get it. If I hear a beat and the beat not cranked up, I gotta find. You gotta tune it down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Around that pocket. That's crazy. So, and you were the first person uh, that was teaching me about pockets and stuff. It's like it's crazy how you learn little stuff. You're like, what is a pocket? And then yeah. you learn. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's why that song over there flows, and yeah. this one doesn't because yeah. he. It's like it's hard to explain pocket. Yeah, it's really hard to explain it, but it does exist. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a real thing. I can't man. even explain it. Like I know. Damn, he, if he would have put that harm, that that ad lib right there, mm -hmm. he would have like made it just yeah. And it's crazy, just placement, yeah, it's just placement of stuff. So that that's that's crazy. So so what's so you went on tour with Tank, mm -hmm. y'all went on tour with Tank. So like being being on tour, like I already know, like that was just fascinated in itself. Like yeah, man, man, we get to do this every other night or every night, and like man, yeah, like the biggest. I think it shocked me whenever. We got off the tour bus in was it might have been New Orleans. Mm -hmm. We got off the tour bus and it said twelve till on the That's crazy. thing that you walk in. I know that, that was that was like the biggest man. That was the best feeling ever. Just uh, to see your name and lights. Yes, bro. That's crazy. Real talk. That was so man. Just made me, made us want to push. You know. Mm -hmm. So one day that's our name and With then everybody else's underneath. name. Yeah. yeah, like you like you going through the you going through the ranks like. Uh, I'm I'm watching that with Tizo. Yeah, I'm watching that with Tizo because like like the beginning some months and months ago his name was Little Bitty uh -huh. on the thing, and then like he moving up. <laughs> yeah, like, like getting this dude's bigger. Name is getting <laughs> okay. Golly, now he right under Doja Cat. Like, yes, bro. That's yes. crazy when you see it. Like, dang, now, now they putting bold print. Mm -hmm. like, like I know that must be a good feeling. Like, man, yeah, bro. it's crazy, man. Yeah, man, that was a wonderful thing to experience because we had never. We had never hit the road like that and uh -huh. got that recognition. We 
We always got the recognition from our fans, like having that fan base. Of, oh, we love y'all. But Thank you for this. When, but it's different when somebody who's doing it, yeah, showing you that type of love and giving you the ropes. You know, oh what yeah, saying? teaching you the game. Yeah, like working out, bro. We were actually going oh, through book with yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Like, that was like one of the requirements. Really? You can be up planning bullshitting all night if you want, but we got gym time. And that motherfucker, like, one time we had went to a restaurant. We was in the city. We went to go grub and shit. We like, nigga, look, nigga let's get some beers. Let's celebrate and shit. Man, we got back to that hotel full, tipsy. Boy said, hey, meet me in the studio. I mean, meet, meet me in the gym in about five minutes. Well, we just got through eating. We just got through drinking beer. Meet me at the gym in five minutes. We went and worked out like a motherfucker. Sick than a motherfucker finna throw up. But we had to go work out. And that was what he was doing every day. He in the city we get in, he gonna find the gym. Really? You welcome to come if you would like, but if you don't, that's on you. He's still gonna be there. He's still gonna be there. <laughs> Fucking right. <laughs> Fucking right. Damn, bro. That take a lot of discipline. Yeah, bro. That take a lot. So you you got a chance to learn discipline and all that doing during that time. That's crazy. Yeah. Being able to just be around him and he is such a high level and you yeah. like so <laughs> You ain't chilling? Yeah, right. Like, you know like, you don't want to kick back? You finna go hit the stage? You don't want to go kick you back? You grinding right? like you trying to get a deal. In Real this, talk. But you got to keep it up, though. That's yep. what keep you humble and to keep you motivated. Because a lot of people get to a certain level and they lose their hungerness. Yes, sir. And you don't want to lose that because you're not putting in the same effort that you was putting in when you was when you was grinding. Mm-hmm. For real, for real. So as far as as far as that, from that aspect, how how important it is to stay, not even just with music. Mm-hmm. Like how important is just stay on your P's and Q's as far as uh, health wise, family, and just always do it like it's your last chance to do it. Man, um, self help. You know, okay. every self help book is plenty of books out there to read. Because right you. now I'm, I'm I'm reading um Atomic Habits. Oh, uh, you yeah. read it before? I have not read it yet. But yeah, I, I just started reading that. And it's, it's just teaching me a lot about myself instead of and and one one thing right now uh, that the book is on is uh, talking about goals mm-hmm. and it's saying how. Um, you can't say that because you have a good goal is because is, that's the reason why you accomplish it. Like two people can have the same goal, mm-hmm. but this person has f- fallen in love with the goal, and this person fell in love with the process of yeah. completing that goal. And I was like, man, bro, that that that's true. Like you gotta, if you have a goal, you have to create systems mm-hmm. in order to make that goal accomplished, and you have to perfect those systems. Yeah, like what can I do? I said I want to read a book. You know, I want to read this many books in a week or in a month. You need to put yourself around books. Create a system in where you have time to read that book. Yes, sir. So, like, I'm I'm learning that right there. So, how important is it to like, you know, just uh, create systems for success? Like, oh man, it's uh top tip for me, man. When I wake up in the morning, uh-huh. I think the best thing going to bed that night is saying I gave everything I could to the day. Man, okay, that is a a beautiful thing. I try to go to the gym. I, I started off. Three to four days. Now I'm uh, up to six days. Ooh. And I also play flag football for recreation, you know, just to keep me young, keep me moving, keep me uh, agile, mobile and stuff. And then I, I got two sons. Okay. So everything, they first superhero got to be me. Oh, yeah. You got to be the best at everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got to be the best, man. So I think it's so important to take care and, and, and learn yourself as much as you can. Okay. And I think you have a better chance of giving that knowledge away to your uh to your loved one, to your friends, to your circle, to your partners, you know what I'm saying, to your family. I think they go a long way, but it starts with yourself though. Sure. Um that self help is is so important. Mental health and uh meditating and praying and having a relationship with God. Um, uh, I think that's been able that that's pretty much what then catapulted me into discipline. And it's crazy how you say discipline because that's with anything in life, it takes discipline. Because sometimes yeah. it's just so hard to, especially being consistent with good things, it's yeah. just it's so hard. Like, it seems like all the bad habits, it's easy to <laughs> just stick to. Like, all right, I'm going to eat a zebra cake every day. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Bro. It's easy to, for stuff like that. But, like, when it comes to the things that we should do, it's kind of tough. So, like, the fact that you say discipline, is just that's just a big deal to me. Um, mm-hmm. uh, moving on to like, because I know that you've been on Healthy Tip. You the one got me on the alkaline water back in the day, <laughs> like drinking water all the time and stuff like that. And I still I still implement those things. So like uh, as far as your health and wealth and just growing into yourself, what's some more things that you've implemented in order to keep that going? Um, I remember when... We actually was on the alkaline kick diet. I still was eating meat back then. Well, oh, I think was? I was transitioning more sort of like turkey. Okay. Like a lean meat. No, no, no. You was, uh, 
I remember pescatarian. Pet you right. That's what she was doing at that time. Yeah, I had never even heard that word <laughs> until you said until you said pescatarian. Yeah, yeah, bro. Uh, well, this coming up uh, Memorial Day, it'll be five years I've been vegan. So, so because this vegan, that's like just no meat, no meat, no dairy products, fish. no. Oh. No meat, no dairy products, no nothing, bro. Anything that come from animal. Uh-uh. And what made you transition to that as far as being vegan? Like, um, Honestly, bro, I think it was more so like I was trying to do something that I know just going to push my discipline and my mindset over that barrier of being like, oh, man, what everybody going to say? What everybody going to think? What I'm eating? Being like everybody else. Uh, I made a promise to God. I was working a regular job back then, bro, believe it okay. or not. Uh, and I was working at a hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, okay. Um, to provide for my uh, my son. Once again, like he took me on a power butt. <laughs> um, to provide for him, man. Just working in the hospital, hearing so many people's stories about health and being sick and the things that they couldn't eat, things they couldn't do just based off of food. You know, it made me want to go down the rabbit hole of being like, damn, well, what if I just cut all that shit out of my diet and just tried to start fresh, like plant-based? I was like, I don't want to be coined as being vegan. That was my big top number. You don't want that uh, title. The stigma, because people think that vegans is just like, ew, you're eat meat eater and shit. Like, I'm like, no, that ain't- No, it don't mean that you look down on meat eater. You're just doing this for you. Like, for the health, man. With other people, what they do. Exactly. Or animals. And, exactly. Yeah, okay. You know, man, like, I did go vegan and uh, I did feel more connected to the earth. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, just understanding how important it is to feed your body just like plants they need the sun they need certain nutrients i started comparing it to like that man and i think it just took me and once i started feeling how you feel from not eating meat that was it bro i was i said i'm never going back never going back i got my youth back i feel good joints ain't aching sickness man it's a little bit easier to get over sickness it's a lot of it come with being vegan and it's so positive so what types of things are you eating like uh on a daily, like so, like is it see, like is weekly? Is it like some of the same things? Um, well, I diet like I would diet when I was eating um like chicken, rice, mm-hmm. and veggies. I was doing that when I wasn't vegan because of working out and just trying okay. to uh cut certain weight. So with vegan, it's the same thing, but you have to find protein substitutes. That's what I was about to say. Like, do you find it hard to harder to to grow gain muscle? Um, not really. I think it got more so to do with your type, the type of training. Okay, you know, I know you need protein to get muscle. Yes, you gotta have it. most definitely. And I know some people that's plant based don't believe that you need plant uh, uh protein. You gotta but have me, protein to get muscle. Come on, man, it doesn't happen without exactly. Now, I'm, I'm old not saying that you have to get the protein from the meat, but Beef it gotta yeah. come from somewhere. Yeah. So, um, like for today, I usually I get up in the morning. I get up like 6.45. I go straight downstairs and I fix a glass of lemon water, water, and uh, turmeric. Mix it together, drink it. That like get me kickstarted for the day. It's like an energy boost? Or like right? an energy boost. Okay. Off Natural top. energy boost. Natural energy boost. Then from now, I might fix me a little cup of beet juice before the gym. Get that nitric uh, oxide going. Get my blood pumping. Open up some of them veins so I can work out and feel good. I got enough breath. And then from now, um, I might do a shake with like blueberries, bananas, spinach, sea moss. I just added starting this year because so many people had talked about it. Yeah, I heard a lot of good things about it. Bro, yeah. I Honestly, throughout being vegan, I had never, I didn't want to join the hype of people like, man, sea moss, sea moss. But I started that at the top of the year. So it's protein, sea moss. Um, spinach, blueberries, raspberries, bananas. Mix that up, and I take that before the gym. Uh, before I go to the gym, okay. um, I'm gonna fast all day, and like I haven't ate yet, but I'm I got rice, yellow rice. Stay away from that white rice. <laughs> stay the fuck away from that white rice. <laughs> but uh, yellow well, rice. Why you gotta stay away from? Um, between the oh, carbs and it's just an unhealthy rice, bro. Okay. Like I had partners that uh worked at the rice factory. They told me how the rice is processed. And now that motherfucker have 
rats and all kind rats. of well, shit. We know that <laughs> stuff just crawling on you. And you know, if, if I can, man, if if I had a time, uh, I try to stay away from rice as a whole. But if I have to, I'm always go to yellow. Or rice, brown. rice is a good filler, not just white rice. Like just mm-hmm. rice is like. If you don't know what to put with this, mm-hmm. you could put potatoes on it. You yes, can, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why people just go to rice because it's like, all right, I, I, I don't want to eat meat, but I want to get full. Yeah, bro. <laughs> and beans, boy. Beans, rice, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, it, that you, you can't never go wrong. Yeah. Especially like when I, because like I told you, I was doing like the little vegan things for some months and stuff like that. Like, Black beans and yeah. bean burgers, stuff like that. Like, it was just, just hearty for me. Like, you can eat stuff like that, and that gives you that. That full feeling that you basically that's what you're craving. Anyway. Yeah, you just craving that. But as you get into it, I'm pretty sure you start liking the fact that you eating foods that get out of you fast. Yeah, that way you can you know what I'm saying move because like that feeling of you just ate and then you can barely walk around Walmart. Yeah, you're like, you know what I'm saying. You don't want <laughs> I'm that full. Feeling, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Too full. Like you want some food that's gonna do what it gotta do and leave. Yes, sir. Not just do what it gotta do and still just. And Stay sit, there. man. Yeah. Give me my nutrients and go on about your business. About you. Yeah, man. don't hold me down. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I, I can see how that that'll be a, a, a benefit. Um, let's t- let's talk about because uh, we uh, talked about twelve till and the uh, group thing. Let's talk about how you transition over into because uh, we all over the place, but that's okay. We just being for real. This is real yeah. content. Ain't Come no, on, man. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no no bulletins, and we're gonna talk about this. So let's just go back and talk about your transition into a solo career. Like, how, how's that going for you? Oh man. Um, I think that's part of what made me who I am. So okay. I can be a better version to the group when we decided to put the group back together. Oh, so okay, so it's not like y'all just coming back together, just doing like clips. Y'all really about to yeah. do this, make music, For sure. original music. For sure. Okay, okay. You know, we we uh, left our fan base with one EP. We didn't even have an album. We literally, uh, yeah, yeah, you sure did. So Texas, yeah, uh, self entitled. What's up with your hunger? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, yeah. So y'all left with that and just disappeared. And disappeared. Okay. Uh, a seven, eight year hiatus. Okay. I want to ask the questions that the people want to hear. When you was out there in LA, mm-hmm. what is it? You don't have to give details, but what? Why? Why did it end? Okay, so I I try to make this as quick. Make it quick without making throwing nobody under the bus. Just I think um like we talked about earlier, when you're in LA and you see so many people doing what you're doing and it's moving so fast, uh-huh. being in a group, it's kind of like teamwork. So if one person isn't moving faster at the other person's expense, they're like, hey, I got to go get it by any means. You know what I'm saying? When you got three heads that's just trying to survive, sometimes you clash. And that's not always a fight or a disagreement that it just cannot be rebuilt. Sometimes it's like, well, that person got more more going for themselves. Fuck it. I got to go find my niche. You know what I'm saying? So I think more so the question that everybody saw is, why did y'all split? I think everybody was moving at their own time. We had a little we had a little rolling momentum after we came off tour, which opened up doors for us individually to go do so many things, songwriting, features, all type of stuff. And I think between that and that that timing, whatever that sticky timing was, coming right off the tour and being like, I got to keep it going. I think we all decided at the same time, like, all right, this best for me, this best for me, this best for me. And, you know, we I would have still been in L.A. It still would have been the group, but uh, my grandma passed okay. in 2016, uh, a little bit after Christmas. And I jetted. I was like, I'm going back home to be with my family. And I just never returned to L.A. Didn't have anything, no clothes, no nothing. I just left. Just, just ducked off. Just ducked off. See, because you was telling me at one point, like, everything wasn't always peaches and cream. Right. right like, you was telling me, uh, I remember years and years ago, you was telling me, man, sometimes, man, we got a box of Little Caesars pizza, and we was up there just yeah, ducking it out. Yeah, man. It was Real tough talk. times. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Bro. It was just y'all. Yeah. And I think, you know, people don't understand when you're going through that grind, like, you hear so many of your favorite artists, like some people went through that grind and went blew up. We took it as like, damn, we got to go get it by any means instead of enjoying that process of going to the gym or sleeping in the studio. We didn't have houses. We didn't have cars. We had a studio and we had a mic and a computer to do what we came out there to do and like really just build a craft. But I think like when it's three grown men and you got to live like that, niggas like, fuck that shit, bro. And that causes 
turmoil between the group, especially being when we went out that we were a little bit younger. And especially being in this position to where you got this little little tiny buzz, but it's buzz enough, like you said, to do features and stuff. Yep. Like this person might want to go, you know what? I'm about to go do a, a song <laughs> with Blue Blue Blue. Yep. You know what I'm saying? With this yep. guy, with Bobby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, he going to pay me 500 to sing yes, on this. And it's like, it's a disconnect. And then you put more effort into solo stuff because you need some money. Yeah. And now it's like, like dang, we ain't got no records. Yep. Like you sitting up there, like, dang, we we BSing out here. Yes, we we, bro. Blow, we fumbling. Real basically. Talk. And then it just it gets to a point where I so I can see where you're coming from with that. Yeah, so uh spending your time uh back to the solo. So spending your time doing the solo, uh, what's some of the things that you was trying to instill in yourself in order to not for that not to happen once if you got another chance, opportunity? Man, um longevity and having that routine, like that's something that when we lived in L.A., honestly, we had the gift, but we didn't have a routine. You know, and every great, whether it's a basketball player or a football player, they all have a routine mm -hmm. to reach the highest potential that they can reach. And I feel like when I decided to go solo, I had no choice but to go find a routine. Perform routine. Okay. I had to find my own, <clears throat> find my own routine. But then in a, way, in a way, it's kind of like it'll be a little easier because it's, it's just you. It's you. And you, you decide, like, if you fail, it's because of you. Yes, sir. If you don't do something, it's because of you. So yep. it's, like, it's not like you relying on someone else to, all right, come sing your part. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So You don't like, get a song done, that's on you. Okay. You don't go to the gym today, that's on you. Yeah, I ain't rehearsed. No, it's me. If I ain't rehearsed, that's on me. I learned that through being uh, solo. Like, you only going to go so far as what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? So what pushes you? Because um, I was talking uh, on the podcast with someone else a while ago about how uh, for a long time, it was hard for me to put in work when I'm not getting nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. So like, to sit in the studio for hours at a time and on your off days when you're not doing nothing and, and, and make these records and create these records, but you're not getting the benefit from them. You're not getting any shows. You're not getting any mm -hmm. money, any clout, nothing like that. So like what, what's in your head to where you just like, you know what? I'm still doing this because I have a bigger purpose. Even though I'm not getting nothing right now, I know that I want to be ready for when the time comes. So like what, what's going through your head while you doing these records and not getting the money or not getting what you think you should be getting for them? 10,000 plus, 10,000 plus, 10,000 plus. Uh -huh. Like, it's never in vain to be working on your gift. Because uh -huh. at, at any moment, you can get a call and somebody say, hey, we need a song. Hey, we want you to jump on tour with us. Hey, we need a feature. You know, Even a background singer. Even a background like, singer. Even that can be a life changer. It's a yeah. lot of background singers that done turned into stars. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. it's like anything, like working on your craft. Mm -hmm. so, Continually okay. working on your craft. Writing songs for people. Anything, yep. you know? Yep. That's, so that's a good way to think of it, putting in your 10,000 hours and trying and, and doing your craft. Because if that's what you do, that's what you do. Yeah. At the Naturally. end of the day, people be like, "Man, I, I'm I'm this and that single, but you only do it when you can make some money. Yep, that ain't what you do. <laughs> yep, you see what I'm saying? So it's like, if is if is this what you want to do or is it not? At mm -hmm. the end of the day, so like I see what you're saying because like like I said, it's it's kind of tough sometimes, man. When when stuff not paying off, you're like, yep. man, I'm about to make this song, nobody gonna listen. <laughs> I'm gonna get 22 streams. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, Yo, it's just bro. like, man, I'm gonna put this song out. So I, I feel you when it comes to that. And and is is it, it ain't always been uh peaches and cream. Sometimes I've been in that mindset. Like, bro, I laugh all the time. I say like through the process of being a solo artist, I didn't damn near quit but uh 500 times in a day and went right back right and back recorded. Studio, <laughs> yeah, like you in the middle of a song, you like, man, Ooh, this is taking too like, long. I fucking it don't quit, sound bro. right. I sit there like, especially when I can't finish the song, bro, and I go to bed like, this song is incomplete because why wasn't I able to finish? That's like the toughest days for me. Like, I have an excellent, like, my days are the greatest when I can go in there and make the song and be like, yeah, I fuck with it. Even if it is a trash song, long as I finish it, I'm okay. You know my favorite song of yours? Uh, All Facts. Ooh, That's yeah, my bro. favorite song. Life. Man. Like, Life, man. From the... the Melody, the tempo, everything. That was the best song Ooh. to me. Love hey, song, man, man, I appreciate that, bro. That was life. Life happened. I was working a bullshit-ass job just trying to provide. This wasn't even working at the hospital. I was working at a fucking warehouse. Oh, yeah, when you was doing the, uh, you said UPS? Or um, I was doing the, I was working at the hospital um, for two years. Okay. But 
that was like in the vegan when I was transitioning yeah, okay. to vegan era, but I had got to Virginia and like the first job I worked was at a warehouse. But the warehouse was shutting down. So like that in between time, I went and got a fucking any job to provide. And I got one of the fucking hardest jobs in the whole world, bro. Well, it's nothing but black. They, it's like a penitentiary. Like everybody that worked there had just got out the penitentiary, bro. I was the only nigga in that whole, a singing ass nigga, like trying to play my shit, play my music for him and shit. Like, nigga, nobody trying to hear that shit, bro. <laughs> you got big nigga, we in there sweating hard down, sweating shit. We ain't trying to hear that shit. But like in that moment, life was so tough, bro. I went home, like I started a root in routine. I would go to the gym before work. I had picked up the shift of um, one o'clock and then I would work to like eight or nine. Okay. I started that shit and I was like, damn, bro. I Like, I want to quit doing music right now, bro, because it just seemed like a nigga not going to get out this position. Mm -hmm. I'm taking pictures in the warehouses. Like, I'm looking around like, bro, I can't believe I'm in a fucking warehouse, bro. It's like- And, and to say you came from- Just touring, bro, like a little bit over a year ago. <laughs> And a nigga in this hole, hard down, hey, uh, Mr. Derrick, can you get this nigga on the goddamn, what's the little things you drive? Yeah. Four gloves. I'm in that hole getting con concrete pallets stacked to the top of the ceiling. Damn. Grabbing the motherfuckers and driving them. And the whole time I was just sitting there and the guy had sent the beat. Shout out to my boy Adam Hayman, man. That's my dog. He had sent me the beat. And um, I was listening to it. Like driving, working on the truck and shit, sweating. Cause after you grab the damn concrete pallets, you gotta take the motherfuckers to the floor and load them onto a truck. So they do concrete and cabinets. Mm -hmm. This not crack. This shit racist as fuck. <laughs> Hispanics on one end, they all doing the building of the cabinets. The black people doing all the lifting, all the slamming on the trucks, all the that's what that's literally how the shit was split up. So like I say, my boy, boy sent me that beat. I got on the truck, bro, sweating, like stressing, bro. I was listening to me. I was like, man, facts, bro. Like, this shit is all facts. Like, a nigga not capping. Like, I'm trying to make a better life for myself and for my son. You know? Like, he, he can't come in this world and be like, damn, daddy just a fucking warehouse worker that gave up on his dream for me. Yeah. No, fuck that, man. I, I went in there and I was working and the melody just came to me. Facing all fact, all fact. The fact of it is I'm in this bitch. But what I'm going to do? I got to go make something. I got to go do something. I was like, oh, that's the song. I got home, got off from work. It was like fucking 9 o'clock at night. Uh, send me that, that hook. Hi. Um, um, uh, I know the hang of it. I'm facing all facts, all facts, yeah, that's, babe. Yeah, that's the end. Uh, oh, I ain't heard it in a while, but that was my favorite one. Uh, it's going to come to me, man. Uh, it's a good song. It's a it's a it's a real bro, it's a really I used to that mug all, this was years couple years ago I used to listen to that mug all man, the time. The placements on that, that's that's how I know God was real, bro. That's how a lot of good songs come though from that. When you mm -hmm. go through your low what you think is your lowest moment. Yes, bro. Man, but but one thing I learned though, like whatever you believe in your head, that's reality. Mm -hmm. So you have to like try to think positive thoughts. <laughs> like that is yeah. big. It's big to try to trick your mind sometimes because yeah. whatever you Say it's true. Mm -hmm. That's what's true. Yes, sir. I ain't gonna never get out of it. Yep. I ain't never go get out. Oh, everything, bro. You ain't never go get out of that, bro. You gonna be in that warehouse when they close. Yes, you bro. Know what I'm saying so. You gotta always think and and, and and strive for better because man, you get to you get to be getting down on yourself and feeling sorry for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna <laughs> it <laughs> yeah, ain't gonna bro. never change, man. It ain't gonna never change for sure. But yeah, that song All Facts, man, that got me through a lot. Uh off camera, man, we're gonna be just be for real, man. The, we had to take a little break because you know, get the cameras and stuff situated, man. But off camera, we was talking about that song and where you was at in life, man, and yeah. where I was at. I was in a dark place as well, but we got a chance to listen to the lyrics, man. That's somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in their part, like, hey man, it's a man that's gonna go and get that bag for you for real, man. Somewhere now. Ooh. It's a man that's gonna do the things he couldn't do. Yeah, man. Come hey, on, that, bro. Hey, that song right there, man. You gotta listen to that, man. All facts by Q Derry, man. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a link somewhere down in the description, but you got you gotta check that out though. For sure. How you feel about the state of uh R and B right now? Uh, because uh do you feel like a lot of people say R and B is dead, but uh R and B is, is coming back alive, I'm noticing. Yeah. And it's a lot of fucking hard artists out man, there, Lucky bro. Lucky Day. Lucky Day is killing it. PJ Morton. PJ Morton. Man, he man, been killing the it. The ladies. Like a fucking R. Lennox. Oh, bro. Man. Her music is so money long. Money, 
I was just about to say her new shit, bro. Summer that Walker, is classic. Summer Walker, though. Summer Walker, my favorite. She's been my favorite. Yeah. Uh, new uh, like upcoming like artists and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as the, uh, from the men's side, my favorite. I'm actually going to see him again for the third time. Going to see Eric Bellinger in Houston <laughs> in March. Dope. Yeah, I'm yeah. going. I'm, I'm gonna be up there with that. The reason why, like, it's not so much of just the R and B and his singing and stuff. It's the fact that he got a lot of music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He got like over 29 albums. Yeah, it's bro. crazy. And he done wrote for some of your favorite or uh, Chris Browns and. Just to be, it's yeah. just crazy. So it's like I like I like the it's the work ethic. It's yeah, crazy. Like I know his catalog, level. fucking crazy, bro. It's crazy. It's stupid. Cause damn, you got so many songs, bro. Yeah, like a lot of songs. Like you was talking about having a lot of songs. Yeah, there's nothing right there for him. I think uh, one time I heard, and I don't want to misquote the number, but it was an interview with Static Major did a long time ago. Like I look up to Static. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he said something like, yeah, I got 10,000 songs in the catalog. I said, what the fuck? I think at the time I might have been at maybe 25 songs No, when and, I watched the interview. And the fact that when when Chris Brown uh, do his interviews, he talking about he got 1,800 songs just in his phone Yeah, that, that's probably not going to come out. And he got enough. <laughs> he got, and that's not including what's on the hard drive. Yeah. But I... Of course, he worked with a lot of writers and stuff like mm-hmm. that and things like that. And when you can sing, you can sing. And yep. you know, all you need is the words. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But still, though, just to be in a studio putting in that much work and you're already established and you're yep. still in there recording all these songs just to see what... That's just crazy to me. Yeah, bro. You can drop an album anytime. Anytime. And, and he don't just be dropping no 10 songs. 22. Like, yeah. come on. Like, all these <laughs> songs to where you can't even remember them. I can't yep. even remember all of them. He dropped so many songs. So that work ethic is crazy. So we was just talking about that, putting in that work and having in the catalog that that right there is going to set you apart from all the other ones other sure. artists um as far as for uh upcoming r&b uh artists and you you've had your experience throughout the years uh what's some stuff that you will be able to tell an upcoming r&b artist or any type of artist like things that they oh, should man. implement in themselves to be great um work on your craft okay and and make sure that you believe in yourself because um as an artist man being so sensitive you look for people to say Oh man, I love that song. Good song. Mm-hmm. Oh man, good note. Good, good note. Good performance tonight. Like man, believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. If I could tell my younger self coming into the business, I would have said, "Hey, know that you the baddest motherfucker. No, nobody can sing like you. Nobody can write and really believe it, and not just be cliche about it. Say, yeah, I'm the greatest, cause it's just a cliche. No man, believe it, bro. And you have to believe it because when you get when you do get great and people start noticing you, like you said, you went to LA and saw all that. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe it, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna expose itself. Yes, sir. And you gonna you gonna really be down and you are gonna stop creating because mm-hmm. man, because he's better than you. Yep. Because but because at the end of the day, like you said, there's tons of people who mm-hmm. are good, and once you meet them, if you don't believe in yourself, you're done. Yep. You're done because you you're not gonna you're gonna feel like you're not worthy. Yep. And don't pay attention to numbers. Mm. I might have to put that might have to be number one in the rule book. Do not pay attention to numbers, man. If this is a numbers game now with TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. Everybody want to get the clicks. Everybody want to get the likes. Everybody, likes. That's how Cheers. you validate it, man. Fuck that, bro. If you're making dope shit and it's it's for you, it's gonna find it's, it's gonna way. happen. Cause like a lot of even with uh, I was watching the. Uh, um, I was watching a podcast or an interview. It was a uh, I can't remember what athlete it was. It was like if you good, somebody gonna find Come you. Come on, bro. Like, come on. If you are good, if you really, if it's if you really a star, mm-hmm. somebody gonna find you. Well, there's two or three. If you can get two or three fans, you didn't did something in this world. Guess man, it's it's like we was just saying earlier, man. It's tough. It's so hard for, to put out music and mm-hmm. and and give give this to the, to the world for them to judge. Like, yep. man. Like okay. <laughs> So, cause like me, when I put out anything, I'm just like, all right, submit. Mm-hmm. It's like, ugh, what they gonna say? Even when yep. I put out a podcast, I'm like, man, did I ask the right questions? Yeah, uh, did did I look nervous? Did I, you know, what I'm saying, was it like a conversation? Like, so it's like, it's always gonna be that in your head when you're thinking that people are critiquing you, but it's okay because mm-hmm. it's good to have those critiques because you know what to get better at. And yep. one thing you want to do is get better by one percent every time. So yes, anywhere uh, it goes, if everybody telling you you're doing good. Mm-hmm. You're never gonna improve. You're gonna stay right there. Yep, yep. For sure, for sure. Uh, what else I was about to say? Uh, what's some new stuff that you're working on? Are you working on an album? Well, I know you're working with the group as, as well. Sure. But are you gonna cancel all the solo stuff? Or are you just uh, gonna try no. to do both? Um, right now I'm working on. A, I released a EP at the top of last year. 
I just mm-hmm. recently, uh, December 2023, a couple of months, well, last month, we still in yeah. January, I just released my Christmas uh, mm-hmm. EP. So a lot of those songs found their way to TV shows, but that's the most recent. Um, and like I say, once that was dropped in on Christmas, I went right back to work on okay. working on the album. Okay. Uh, I think I took off like the past two weeks to kind of focus more on the group. But mm-hmm. other than that, man, still, uh, on it. still doing music okay. every day. Uh, preparing for albums and also just really get myself acquainted with the people. I didn't became a whole different person than who they remember me with in the group. The quiet, laid back, like because that was you. You was just yeah. like, all right, I'm just here to sing. Yeah, you know? bro. Like now, I have something to say. I I think I live a exciting life of being a parent, mm-hmm. a lover, a, a a man. I think I got more to say now. Um, in diet, even being a game head, people don't know that because. They don't know, but like Dante B can tell you, when we was in L.A., bro, they used to be like, hey, can somebody please get Quinn out of there playing the game? I was sitting in front of that motherfucker and play Madden until I get 10 dubs straight. <laughs> <laughs> if a motherfucker with me, I got to get 10 dubs before I get off of Madden. And I, I see how uh, how you was talking about being a family man and, uh, and having your kids and everything. How is mm-hmm. that affecting the music? Man, I think I'm more emotionally okay. attached to making good music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That people can play in the household or even a, a, a young dude that don't know how to love a woman or he ain't never seen that before. Shit, I want them to listen to them records and be like, man, I fuck with homie. If I was a, if I was able to sit down and talk to him or talk to him on the phone, I know that nigga can give me some good game on my relationship. So that's been my perspective of writing songs now. So just being just, so just being a parent and being in in that field, like what's what's some things that you've learned and some advice that you can give now now that you live in it mm-hmm. as far as being a parent, especially to two boys, black yeah. black boys at that. You yes, know? sir. Man, um, you got to put into them early uh-huh. to know who they are. Okay. You know, my son. When we on our, when I'm taking him to school, I take him to school in the morning. How old is your oldest? Uh, my oldest is about to make six in February. Okay, okay. Um, when I take him to school, we listen to motivation podcast. Mm. We listen to um, it's the shit that I listen to when I'm working out. It's like you were born a king. Uh-huh. You strong. Just just giving those affirmations. Yeah, yeah. the affirmations. Um, and just giving him the superhero mindset. Like, bro, when you get older, when you get my age, you gonna hear the stuff I'm telling you now. You gonna be already ahead. I learned this stuff when I got older. Older, yeah. You know, now you believe in it now, just no telling what you can accomplish. Man, he he, he say all the time. Like I, I had one of the most proudest moments this morning when I went to his school. Yeah. I went to drop him off, and I was getting ready to go to the gym. And his teacher ran out of the classroom to come tell him. She said, um, "He's so far advanced mentally when it comes to his reading, his sight words, stuff like that." She said, and "He's a great child." And when she said that, I said, "Well, I turned around. I said." Fuck yeah. Like, that made me feel so good, bro. <laughs> uh, his classmates, they love him. Yeah. You know, but those are the things that since he was one, I, I used to think that shit wasn't going to do what it done but now that he's five. Yeah. He was zero months, one month. I was playing gospel songs for him, telling him like, hey, yeah, you're going to be able to get through anything. When you get in there, you're going to be this. You're going to be this. Yeah, your daddy doing this right now. I was speaking this stuff to him when he was a child. A lot of the album... um, on All About You. Some of those songs I recorded in 2018. That album came out in 2022. Okay. He sat in my lap when I recorded you those. You singing that. When, I, and my, when my second born came, I was like, oh, now it's time for another level. You know, health, strength. Like, they believe they super sins. <laughs> you know, they really believe that. You know, like, when I was a kid, I had my favorite superhero. Yeah. I tell them, you got super saiyan blood running through you. Really? You need like you we can punch something. You can punch. You can punch nine on something if you wanted to. <laughs> but you but you know how to handle that. You ain't gonna do it because you you want to. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. One of the best things I learned about Goku. They said Goku is the strongest saying because he know how to control his rage. Oh, that's deep. He he one of the nicest sayings, but he's one of the strongest. Mm-hmm. Because Con- how he control is everything. Come on, dog. Control is everything. Come on, man. Goku ain't never walking out the house and going, yeah, I'm going to find beef. It find and his way. And that's a lesson. Just because you can do something don't mean you should. Come on, now. That's crazy. And once you know that, mm-hmm. you powerful. Mm-hmm. Because you know what? I'm going to spare you. Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm going to spare on. you today. Come on, man. I, I'm, I'm from Beaumont, so I always said when I had children, I would always get them 
where they from. Yeah, yeah. Well, part of them where they from. A part of them. Um, Beaumont. But I would also teach them the things I didn't learn when I was their age. So have you implemented the uh, the vegan lifestyle to your family? Or are you, you oh, yeah. pushing? Or did everybody know Came me in the house vegan. at all? I was, I want to say, okay, so. Okay, so everybody in the house is vegan. Everybody okay, is vegan. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, they, they know the difference now. Like, it's funny because uh, my youngest son, Quest, uh, my mom and them had came my dad to my house for like a yeah. Christmas brunch, and uh, he got some chips. I went and got the snack wrap, uh, that the 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 pack. You know yeah. they got like twenty other chips in there. Yeah. Some of them don't have milk, so you got to read the package and see that it's milk on the back. So he had already heard us say, "Oh, that one got milk. That one got milk." He took it to my mom. He said, "Him, hey, grandma, you can eat this one. I can't eat milk." And they thought that was the funniest shit ever, but. Like they very conscious about yeah. eating and what they eat and shit, man. It's in the pudding. Pudding. They they energy. They they, they yeah. stay on energy, bro. That's good though. Like having you know, what I'm saying instilling that in because at the end of the day, when kids are like addicted to sugar and stuff, and you they be getting mad at the kid, mm-hmm. but really they only eat what you give them. <laughs> yeah, and you you got them addicted to that. So it's like like every every store run, you going to get the chicken nuggets. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that, that you did that. Yeah, you bro. get them a soda in the bag of chips. <laughs> it's like you can't be mad at the kid. That's yep. all he knew. He only know what you know. If you grew up only eating broccoli, that's what they'll be eating. <laughs> Yep. You know what I'm saying? So like you inst- it's good that you're instilling what you know the those qualities. Now what they choose when they get older, that's on them. That's on them. But at the same time, you gave them a, a, a healthy foundation. Yeah. Because at the, uh, at the end of the day, it's about that foundation. Yes. Cause like because uh. when you it don't matter. Like that's like being uh, involved in a church. You might get older or you might go and make uh, bad choices. But if your foundation was good, that you can is. always reroute. And get down to the roots, you know what I'm saying. So it's just building those roots and having them as strong as possible, basically yes, at the end of the day. So that that makes a, a hell of a lot of sense. So uh, as far as um, did we did you say anything that you're working on solo uh, album? You know, you said you was working on another one. Yeah, took I'm two working weeks on off. another one. Yeah. Okay. Do you got a name of it, or you just? Um, now I know um, I got a couple names in mind. Okay. And and, and from it. It just varies because really with this album, I want to make the people fall in love, but I also want a baby boom. Mm. Like I, I, I got to be a part of the baby boom, whether that's solo or with Twitter. Okay. I, I want people to make more babies and know how to take care of them babies because <laughs> the people that they watch and make their music can get them advice. Got you. You know, I got you. That, that make a lot of sense. It won't be like this motherfucker telling me to go raw in this girl and go have a baby. And he don't even take care of his kids, so, you know. So, so some of the music that uh, that you're making, like uh, with Twelve Till, like when is that music gonna come to where uh, I almost made it? Music, you know, you know how artists come in making music and it's like life, 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 mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden they be, it's like the cocky. Like, do y'all have some of that coming, or it's just it's all just love, like nah. Passion. That's what y'all. I, I think I think we got a little bit of cockiness. Okay, enough. okay, Cause because I like that. I like the evol- evolution to where. And I say confidence. You feel yourself, huh? I say confidence instead of uh, okay. confidence because we got something to prove, bro. Okay. It's a lot of groups out here like once Twelve Till disappeared, every group came. And they got groups that's doing their thing now. Mm-hmm. But man, listen, Twelve Till is from Beaumont, Texas. And anybody that's been to Beaumont, Texas and know what Beaumont, Texas is about, anytime you can make it out doing what you love to do, True. hey, man. You own the something. That's why I commend like Tizo so so much. Come like, on, bro. Talk about making it, man. Come on, billboards. Billboards. The boy that made it to billboards. Not just billboards, just on tour. Tour. Travis Scott. Then he about to start his own mm-hmm. uh, open tour, and it's selling out in Amsterdam. Selling the fuck out in Amsterdam. Hey, from man. Beaumont. Come on, bro. That it's teach you crazy. though. Crazy. Anything is possible, bro. Anything. Anything. anything he got is a possible. song called that. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> anything. Anything can happen, man. Like. All you got to do, like you said, stay down, put in the work, 10,000 hours, mm-hmm. and, just, and just grind at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so is there anything, you know what I'm saying, you want to say to the people, to the viewers, like, you know? Say, man, I love y'all, and I appreciate y'all for being patient with 12 Till. I appreciate y'all loving us individually while we was getting our shit together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all loving us as people and, and just being down for us, man. It feel good to do a video and people say, man, damn. I'm so glad to see them together because this was part of my childhood. Wow. Like, man, that shit means so much. Some We got so much love from the video that we just posted together of people saying we were a part of their life. And, man, that shit just, I, I just want to say thank y'all, man. That really mean a lot because we forget that sometimes. 
And you need to be reminded by the people that was watching and, and putting that energy into making sure that y'all become who you're supposed to become. So shout out to y'all, man. Shout out to all my people. Hey. It's going down, die, man. 2024, we're going to turn up. Oh, it's turning up for 2024. I'm, I'm happy to see it, man. And one day, hopefully I can get all y'all on here. Yeah. And we can just discuss. And, and hopefully by then, we got some music out. Yeah. Some more music. Yes, sir. And, and we can just talk, discuss about art and whatever else y'all got going on in your life. But yeah, we're going to wrap it up. And uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, if you are a podcast viewer or listener i want you to go to any one of your favorite streaming sites and you can listen on apple Podcasts, spotify anywhere where you listen to your favorite podcast and uh you can follow us everything is down here on the video tiktok instagram and everything else and uh q Derry's information to be uh on there as well so i want to thank y'all for listening thank you for watching until next time be for real